Hello and welcome to this little video of Easter eggs and things you may have missed in the Sam Spallucci short story, The Case of the Pillaging Pirates. Please give us a quick like and if you like what you see, why not have a subscribe? You'll get to see more of these lovely little videos as they crop up. Now, before I carry on, I've just got to say a huge thank you to everybody who helped make this video and in fact made the book possible. Those are the members of my Patreon book club and the Kickstarter. Kevin Denwood, Jacob Matz, Paul Lewis, Gemma Innes, Stephen Logan, Charlotte Smith, Nadine Shinfield, Charlie, Debs, Ron Chick, Becca Pierce, Rebecca Boo Hardy, Simon Brindley, Rebecca Armstrong, A. Holmes, and Ravana. Thank you very much, guys. You're awesome. If you'd like to hear your name shouted out across the internet at fairly frequent intervals, why not consider subscribing to my Patreon book club? Membership is just from £1 a month. That's not so bad, is it, really? Um, there's a link down below. Number one, not a fan of holidays. Yeah, now this is one of the things that Sam and I definitely share. I find going on holiday far too stressful. I, I love my home comforts at home, you know, my chair, my bed, my, hell, even my little coffee mug, you know, things like that. Um, there's the journey, there's going to a strange hotel. It's just far too much, far too much stress. When I get home, I feel like I need another holiday, but I cause even more stress. It's a never-ending cycle. Number two, Ulfracoom. Sam mentions going to Ulfracoom as a kid, and this mirrors a lot of my summer holidays. My mum had a friend who moved down there, uh, Ulfracoom, a beautiful little place down in North Devon, and she set up a B&B, &B, and she always insisted that we have our holidays there free of charge, so obviously we did. Number three, Great Cumbrae. Now, this story isn't set in Sam's normal stomping ground. Well, why is that then? Well, I've been a fan of the Barney Thompson books um, by Douglas Lindsay for many years. And back in 2022, I made a comment that it'd be rather fun if... Barney and Sam were to meet up somehow. Douglas liked the idea, and this story was the result. Great Cumbrae is where Barney Thompson books are set, and is a small island just off the west coast of Scotland. Number four, Spliff's sister. Here we have a throwaway comment about Spliff's Isa Maiden sister, Sheila. Um, we first meet her in passing in The Fury of the Fallen when she arranges a terribly low-key funeral for her deceased brother. Number five, the scenic route. The journey to Great Cumbrae is, well, it shouldn't have taken that long from Lancaster, really. You nip up the M6, then the M8, and hop over to the coast from Glasgow. It's very straightforward. However, Spliff, being Spliff, has insisted that they take the scenic route. You know, nice things to see. As a result, the journey has taken far longer than it should have done. Number six, Morris the Sheep. Now, this was originally just a little offhand um, thing from me. I decided that Morris was a daft name for a sheep and it'd be a bit of fun that it would turn out to actually be the sheep's name when they're in the barber shop and they find out. However, this has actually become a huge Easter egg in the Spallucci verse. How come? Well, I've now actually used it two more times. In Bobby Normal and the Fallen, um, the Archangel Michael is living on his own tending sheep. And one of them is called Morris. He says that apparently Morris is a good name for a sheep, which is the same sort of comment we have here. 
And, you know, this reflects what Spliff has said to Sam. Now, the thing is, how does Michael know that? There's a big hint in Sam Spellucci Lux Eterna, which is going to come out, you know, late 2023, Sam 8, where Sam talks with a certain character, All Saints, and comments about, you know, God, you know, as a shepherd, would he have a sheep called Morris? Again, referring back to this particular little scene here in Pillaging Pirates, because, you know, it's a good name for a sheep. So this quip by Spliff gets taken up by Sam, who then passes it on to this other person whose name I'm not going to mention just yet. Spoilers. The three references show that the person to whom Sam is speaking in looks isn't exactly what they appear to be. Number seven, Grandpappy's House. So I situate Grandpappy's House on Provost Lone. It's just the north end of Millport, and you can look it up on Google Maps. The street does actually exist. Number eight, the tourist dressed as pirates. Um, I love this detail in the story. Uh, I start off with well-known characters such as Jack Sparrow and Blackbeard and the like, but I wanted to create a whole sort of menagerie of pirates, um, which I felt sort of like fitted in rather nicely with the way Douglas writes his books. He has sort of like these little references as well. So basically I just downloaded a whole list of from somewhere and worked through the list of historical pirates and had an absolute hoot. Um, coming and sort of like dropping these little names in here and there. It's brilliant. Absolutely love doing it. Number nine. Yeah, the poltergeist in Harry's oven. Yeah, so this is an interesting one and actually sort of retcons or covers up um, what is, in truth, a glaring error in Sam Sfluci's Fury of the Fallen. Fury contains the case of um, the generous genie, uh, where Sam helps the owner of the Chinese restaurant of Paradise Dragon, um, Harry Kim, by getting rid of this troublesome genie. As a result, Harry gives Sam um, 15A Dalton Square, uh, flat and an office above the Chinese restaurant as a place to live and work. However, in case book, which I wrote back mm, years ago, Sam says that he got the place rent free because he got rid of a poltergeist for Harry. Oops. Yeah, oops indeed, buddy. I missed that one. Um, so... <laughs> Here we have Sam talking about how he sorted out a second case for Harry. And he seems a touch miffed that Harry has just confirmed that 15A is rent free, even though it already was. But there you go, that's Sam's life, isn't it? Number 10 the description of the barbershop. Ah, oh, when Sam enters the barbershop, he is transported back to his youth. Here I was drawing on the barbers from my own youth. Um, it's where my mum used to take me as a kid. I think it's called Albert Watts in Wellingborough. Um, anyone who lived in sort of like Wellingborough in the 70s and 80s will remember Albert Watts. It used to be sort of like part of a, I think it was a fishing tackle shop which had the, the barbers behind it. And then he expanded over the road at you know, the tackle shop or something like that on one side and the barbers on the other. And the description is, is practically identical right down to the aromatic spray and that they, they used to coat my hair with it after having my trim. I love that stuff. And just talking about it now, I can say, yeah, I, I, I can remember the aroma vividly. Ah, oh, happy days. Number 11. Barney, Keanu, and Igor. The three main characters of Douglas's books are penned here exactly as they appear in his pages. 
Barney is quietly spoken and full of insights. Keanu is tall, gawky and obsessed with films. Eagle, oh. well, as far as I'm concerned, Eagle is just literary genius. He is possibly my favourite fictional character ever. Um, uh, all the deaf mute hunchback can say is arf. And yet everyone knows exactly what he is talking about. I mean, Douglas is marvellous for his character. I mean, you just create this character, only says arf. And as a reader, you know what he's talking about. Absolutely nailed it. Love him. Number 12, Frank Maguire. So, Spliff's grandpappy turns out to be Frank Maguire, an ageing customer of Barney who is actually completely bald, even though he has his hair cut. Um, during the pandemic lockdowns, Douglas wrote two books, um, which were collections of scenes from the barbershop. Frank was one of the most constant customers, always voicing his very, very vocal opinions. I fell in love with him as a character, as he reminded him of my own grandpappy. Uh, then to cap it all, you find out at the end of the book that he doesn't have a single hair on his head. And yeah, just brilliant. That, that's, that's pure Douglas Lindsay. Absolutely marvellous. Number 13, A K Dalglish 1980. So throughout the Barney Thompson books, obviously, you know, Barney is this barber. Um, the haircuts are all referred to in reference as to a famous person or how that famous person had their hair cut in a certain year. Quite often footballers are used, you've got actors, actually, all that sort of business. I just had to pay homage to this little trope that Douglas uses. And I thought, Kenny Dalglish, 1980. Yeah, absolute classic hairdo. Number 14, the ill video. Now, I know it's supposedly very bad form to laugh at your own jokes. But every time Frank voices his confusion as to what going viral means, I, I, I crack up every time. I just do. Number 15, the projection of the ship. So I had to go full Scooby-Doo with this one. And the idea of using a projector to create a ghost ship. I think the first time I saw them do it was obviously in the iconic show. And it was a plane up in the sky, which had been cast by a little projector. Now, obviously, it's utter poppycock. I'm, I'm sure it can't be done. If somebody ever manages to do this, I would love to see it. That'd be absolutely fantastic. But it, 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 I'm sure it can't happen. But it just fits the whole feel of this short story. And plus, there was also a Barney Thompson book, which includes a set of characters which are very similar to Scooby and the gang. So again, a little homage. Number 16, Sam's office furniture. Sam mentions that he has office furniture waiting for assembly back at 15A Dalton Square, and the instructions are in a Chinese language of some description. This harks right back um, to the very, very first scene in Casebook, um, his first adventure, obviously, um, where he is losing the will to live trying to set up this furniture. And finally, number 17, Sam says that Lancaster can't be ground zero for all things supernatural and paranormal. Oh dear, how wrong he was. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed those. Um, again, quick like and subscribe would be fantastic. And if you should fancy, like I say, having your name shout out at the beginning of these videos, there is a link down below to my Patreon book club. Membership starts on £1 a month. Higher memberships exist and you even get physical books with some of them as well. So check that out and my website airschambers.co.uk. Have a great day. I'll see you again soon. Bye bye now.